The ocular motor is the third cranial nerve. It is a mixed nerve containing motor fibers, that is, general somatic afferent fibers, and preganglionic parasympathetic fibers, namely general visceral efferent fibers. Even though the nerve itself arises from the two nuclei located in the rostral midbrain, we must first understand how these particular nuclei receive information from the cerebral cortex. Thus, we can say that the oculomotor nerve has a central part, meaning the connections it has in the central nervous system, and a peripheral part, which is the visible nerve as a part of the peripheral nervous system. The oculomotor nuclei receives information from neurons located in the motor cortex. In this case, from the motor neurons located in the middle frontal and inferior frontal gyrus. This area is cytologically classified as Brodmann Area 8 and is believed to be involved in planning complex movements, in this case, movements of the eyeball. The axons of these neurons then leave the cerebral cortex and head to the midbrain to synapse with the oculomotor nuclei located in the rostral midbrain. The pathway from the cerebral cortex to the nuclei located in the brainstem is called the corticonuclear or the corticobulbar tract. The corticonuclear tract first passes through a sheet of white matter called the corona radiata. The corona radiata contains both the descending axons arising from the cerebrocortical neurons and ascending axons arising from neurons, some of which are located in the spinal cord and the thalamus, that travel respectively via the spinothalamic tract and thalamocortical tract. The corticonuclear tract then passes through the genu of the internal capsule a flattened band of white matter located between the lentiform nucleus laterally and the caudate nucleus and thalamus medially. The axons then decussate to the opposite side and reach the neurons of the oculomotor nuclei and synapse with them. The information from the cerebral cortex has now reached the second neuron, also known as the lower motor neuron, of the oculomotor's nerves pathway. Simple, right? But wait a minute, we missed one more detail. Actually, most of the axons arising from the motor neurons of the cerebral cortex do not synapse with neurons of the ocular motor nuclei directly. They first synapse with small neurons in the reticular formation called interneurons. These interneurons then synapse with the motor neurons of the ocular motor nerve. Also, please take into account that some axons do not cross to the opposite side but synapse with the ipsilateral interneurons instead. So, we have now covered the pathway conducting information from the cerebral cortex to the oculomotor nuclei. But, as I mentioned in the beginning, the oculomotor nerve is a mixed nerve which also contains preganglionic parasympathetic fibers. These fibers arise from a completely different nuclei called the accessory oculomotor nuclei more commonly known as the Edinger-Westphal nuclei. The Edinger-Westphal nucleus is named after two German scientists, namely Ludwig Edinger, who described the nucleus in the human fetal brain in 1885, and Carl Friedrich Otto Westphal, who described it in the adult human brain two years later. Please note that even though the anatomy courses do not usually cover the central regulation of the autonomic nervous system components, you should be aware that the preganglionic parasympathetic nuclei also receive input from higher structures such as the paraventricular nucleus of the thalamus, which in turn receives input from the limbic system. So, back to the subject at hand. We have figured out the central part of the oculomotor nerve pathway, and we can now proceed with its peripheral part. The oculomotor nerve emerges from the brainstem in the interpeduncular fossa between the cerebral peduncles. It then pierces the dura mater and continues in an anterior direction inside the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. It then leaves the cranial cavity and enters the orbit through the superior orbital fissure. 
After entering the orbit, it divides into the superior division and the inferior division, which is larger. Both divisions run beneath the trochlear and ophthalmic nerves at the beginning. The superior division then passes above the optic nerve to supply the superior rectus muscle and gives off a branch that innervates the levator palpebrae superioris muscle, therefore it contains only motor fibers. However, the inferior division carries the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers along with the motor fibers and separates into medial, central and lateral branches. The medial branch enters the ocular surface of the medial rectus muscle. The central branch enters the ocular surface of the inferior rectus muscle. The lateral branch enters the orbital surface of the inferior oblique muscle and communicates with the ciliary ganglion to distribute the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers to synapse with neurons in the ciliary ganglion. The postganglionic parasympathetic fibers of the ciliary ganglion eventually innervate the sphincter pupillae muscle and the ciliary muscle. Note that the oculomotor nuclei are also interconnected with other cranial nerve nuclei in the brainstem. Some neurons of the vestibular nuclei belonging to the vestibulocochlear nerve project fibers to the neurons of oculomotor nuclei as well as neurons of the abducens nerve nucleus and trochlear nucleus. For example, the connection between oculomotor and abducens nerve nuclei is mediated by the medial longitudinal fasciculus to provide the medial movement of one eye simultaneously with the lateral movement of the other eye during lateral gaze. To provide this, the abducens nucleus sends inhibiting impulses to the ipsilateral nucleus, thus inhibiting the medial rectus of one eye, while sending activating impulses to the contralateral oculomotor nucleus, activating the medial rectus muscle of the other eye. So, the medial rectus muscle of one eye is activated, while the medial rectus muscle of the other eye is inhibited.